Greetings. We are in day one of a new lunar cycle. Lunar cycles are when it's a new moon, meaning it's the dark of the moon. It's completely black. And then the day after that becomes day one, of the new lunar calendar. Why is that important? Well, it's because that then becomes day one of you and your endeavors to plant new ideas, to take on new projects, to put something, a seed into the ground of fert fertility, not futility, fertility. So it's when you will be beginning a creative endeavor. Mm -hmm. This could be anything. This could be even be saying goodbye to something as you say hello to something else. So for instance, last new moon was very powerful in November 2021. And that is when I was, the spell was broken between me and the narcissist who I had been with my guy for 10 plus years, even though I have talked about him in the past. I now can tell you that he is part of my past. And in truth, it's as if that 10 years never happened. That's when you know you've sealed the deal personally. So in a nutshell, what narcissism is, is when you're dealing with a person whose personality is split and that there is no growth in the relationship. It goes through cycles. And it needs it needs that it, it means also that your needs are not met, that you were neglected, not listened to. It's impossible to have a adult to an adult conversation with this sort of person because they fly up the handle. They get very emotionally upset because when you have a conversation with a human being that is an adult in body, they are not necessarily adult mentally. So I'm jumping around here and there to both bring into a, a new, in, into this perspective, this new idea that every human being has the opportunity at the new moon to sow the seeds that they have a wish for fulfillment of. Sow the seeds that you wish to see grow, that you wish to see into fruition. And that's when at the full moon, you can see the results of your endeavor. And then you integrate that into your life. And then you assimilate it. So it's sort of like food preparation. You do the shopping, the thinking of the recipes first, and the shopping and the selecting. So you tune in to yourself, what you'd like to grow. Um, in this case, what you'd like to create by way of a meal. And then you gather what you need to. And then you decide how you're going to prepare it. And then you prepare it. And then you have the meal. Now that meal is now, now the full moon. That's the full moon. Then comes the sitting back, the digesting part of it. Um, and then you must then recognize that the nutrients are assimilating. They're becoming you. You are what you eat. And then you do the cleanup work. You clean the dishes. You put things away. You store the foods that you haven't completely eaten. And that is sim similar to what I'm talking about. That's depicting, that's a representation, that's a metaphor of what I'm saying. That you, at, the, at a new moon, have the opportunity to create something. And you get to decide what it is you're going to create. 
and then at full moon you get to see what it is that you've created and then from there the uh, observations are made about what progress has been made <laughs> so in our current society and the planet the moon is hardly ever looked at and that's a crime against the culture of the original peoples on this planet pre-religion pre-book religion and it's a crime why because then people flounder they're not looking they're not um they may flounder because maybe they make plans at the wrong time Maybe they start something new at the full moon and the energies of the universe is going against them or not necessarily against them, but it's not with them. So for instance, swimming with the tide is a lot easier to swim with the tide than it is to swim against the current. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? So it's that sort of thing, the progress that you can make, the momentum that you can have. It's all dependent on the powers that you find yourself in and around. The, the elements, the wind, the water. Yeah. So if you haven't already, think to yourself what it is that you would like to put into action. What would you, what would you personally like to uh, do with this, this new moon, this first day, uh, this first you know, five days of a new lunar cycle. Today is uh, the 5th of December, I believe, um, Sunday, 2021. And I think it was a super moon or super new moon or something yesterday. So that means it's pretty powerful. Yesterday is Sunday. So yesterday, Saturday is when it happened, the 4th. This is powerful, powerful, powerful. Um, so why do you think the controllers or the, the ones that I call them, they, yes, they do exist. Who are they? They are the entities and the lineages of people who eradicated the true history, history of the, the natives on the planet and then gave us book gods and things counter so the calendar's linear, whereas we used to follow a cycle, a circular wheel of, of life. And now people must, part of them perhaps, are getting back to it. It doesn't take the end masses. It doesn't take the masses for this to actually become part of the quantum field of reality. It takes you. It takes me to recognize the cycles that we're in. And then you just hold it in your body and you pay attention to it by way of the calendar, but you think thinking of it as the circle um, rather than lines, like a calendar line. Just like, you know, linear thought, linear um, plans. You know, you make a plan, you have a goal, you have steps towards that goal and you one, two, three, this is how you're going to do it. That's, that's a way of thinking that doesn't take into account cycles and it doesn't take into account natural rhythms. And that's what I'm talking about. Learning how to tune into natural cycles and natural rhythms. Now, self observation would be that you would notice at what time in the day you feel more energized? At what time in the day you feel sort of, you know, not so energized? And given that you have the day off of a work situation, when you're not so energized, that's a really good time to meditate. And I've taught some meditation and there will be videos in the future and which we go through a meditation complete with my Tibetan sound healing bowl. I have a beautiful sound healing bowl. I might show it to you. 
<laughs> if you're good, if you're lucky. Um, and it's a simple meditation that where you just take in color and direct it with the heart because the heart space is the space of grace and goodness and power. The heart is more powerful than this, which is why they wanted to put everything up in here, mental, whereas it's really the heart. The heart is the most powerful instrument of your field, of your energy field. The mind is a tool. You use your mind, focus, intention, and creativity in meditation. So a, the simplest meditation of all is just to um, close your eyes, tune in, and listen to your heart. And just tune into it and breathe. And it doesn't have to be like 30 minutes. It could be two minutes or whatever. For as long as you feel like doing it. So whenever you're tired, just do that. Like, okay, have you ever done this when you're in bed and you're tossing and turning and you're like, Bleh. get up and write things down if you've got things going on mentally. And the other thing is you can actually uh, meditate. You can circulate the energy. You can take the colors in. Uh, let's say you want to clear out your third chakra. You can take blue in through the crown sapphire blue, pull sapphire blue up from the earth. So you're commingling the, the masculine powers that are coming from the celestial forces and energetic streams. You bring that in and then you're taking the blue core, the blue earth, the blue truth, the beauty of Gaia Sophia, the, the mother planet, the feminine, the divine feminine, and you bring that up. And so through your body, your body becomes the vehicle and the instrument for these energies to commingle. <laughs> so the blue comes in through the crown and then the, to the heart. And the blue comes in through the base, through the feet, through the first chakra, which is located somewhere between the knees around thigh level. Everybody has a different location point for that portal. The details aren't important. Just use your imagination. And then you bring that in. And then you circulate it in your heart. And if you want to clear your third chakra, then um, you turn it into a tornado going counterclockwise that encompasses your physical form and you clear out your third chakra. Yeah. And then once you cleared it out, you give thanks to the planet for the, for the life you've been given. And you... Um, bless humanity and you send love and wish that all beings may they have all the wonderful beauty and abundance and love that you have received and then more yeah and you'll probably fall asleep and have the best dreams ever speaking of which <laughs> i had a dream and i was i had a lucid dream and in it, there was a contraption and it was opening up a negative portal for the negative energies to come in. And guess what yours truly did? I dismantled it. I remember going, what is this? And I remember exactly what it looked like and exactly the shape and exactly what the device is. And I'm not going to describe that to you because it's my, my dream. But I remember dismantling it and the energy I had was not on my watch. Those negative energies aren't going to come in on my watch, meaning my incarnation. I'm shutting that portal down. Now, I don't claim to be able to do this in, in my resume. I don't have like portal uh, uh, of uh, a beauty enhancer or evil portal uh, closer. That's not what I have on my resume. <laughs> but when I woke up, I was like, oh, huh, who knew that we could do stuff like that? So they who think they are in control aren't. They're losing control little by little, which is why they have to keep putting propaganda on 
the boob tube and try to convince people that life is really dire and awful and there's a, a military state and forced injections coming to a town near you. <laughs> la, 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 la. Don't pay any attention. Live your life. Live, be your light. That being my light, being in my life and fully embracing my life has become ever more dashingly wonderful for me ever since I learned how to do the clearing the third chakra, which I obtained from Fortune St. Germain on Crow 777 Radio. That's Crow with two R's, C-R-R-O-W 777.com. And I think it was episode 361, but I don't remember. And I will link it if you, somebody asks me. Otherwise, find it for yourself because nobody reads the description below the video anyway. Or do you? Do you? <laughs> um, and he, he, ta he taught me that blue tornado one, uh, me and everybody else listening. And that was in the first hour, but I paid for the second hour uh, because it was so good. It was only $7 for a full month. So, so go ahead and you can listen to first and second hour. Anyway, back to my point. And the l lesson that I obtained was that the fortunes uh, taught taking in the purple flame of transformation through the crown. Now that is Jesus's color. <laughs> Jesus, whatever his real name was. And then you're bringing in the scarlet red of Mother Earth and you're commingling that in the heart. And this violet flame mixed with the blood of Mother, the scarlet red, uh -huh. you then swirl that and then you, you aim that at your third chakra and you clear your ch third chakra and you stay aloud or in your mind with your intention. I clear all negativity in my solar plexus from the past, present, and future. All negativity is cleared from me, from the past, the present, and the future. And as many times as you feel like you need to, and then you do the same thing as the aff affirmation blue tornado meditation exercise, in which you um, then bless the earth, giving her thanks for my, thank you for my life. Thank you for being my divine wisdom goddess mother, because the earth has information. Not only love is in the earth, frequencies are in the earth. The ley lines and the uh, pyramids and all of that stuff, that was all to generate energy and transmute it and translate it. So you receive the energy through the cosmos. It goes through these generators into the earth and you receive that information. And it's not this type, talk, 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 talk. It's going to become intuited and it's going to come through body wisdom, body awareness. So to reiterate, the purple violet flame is a cosmic flame, cosmic ray. And then the scarlet red, that's earthly. And then you bring those into your heart, you commingle them, you aim that to your third chakra you burn off all the negative energy, and then you want to fill it with gold. That's right. You fill it with the celestial gold, and then you fill it with the earthly gold, just like gold nuggets. And that then radiates because the universe will fill a void with something if you don't, and fill it with this gold. And then you send that love out because now it's been transmuted. It's heightened. It's celestial. It's, it's like Jesus showed us the way. But of course, they had to, they had to screw with his story. And I won't go there right now. That's the simple exercise. And you can do that if you have insomnia. Um, you can do that to determine what it is that you would like to put out into your life for the seeding of your soul of your endeavors at this new moon period. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty nice, huh? 
So ever since I left the narcissist, I, um, I did it in slow increments. I basically, I'll tell you the story. So he's at a job where it's over 100 employees in the United States of America. And the current puppet that's holding office as the president mandated or put it out there that was a presidential mandate, which you legally can't do. It's overstepping executive powers if you study the United States government at all. And he put it out that everybody in a company of over 100 employees had to get an injection. So I told my then partner to wait it out. I go, wait, wait it out. There's going to be an, a, a stoppage or an injunction. I didn't know what words I used. I said, it's illegal. There's going to be a legal re um, recourse that's going to stop this lunacy. And sure enough, that's ex exactly what happened in the States here. But it was too late for him. He got injection one and injection two. In injection two, they actually hit an arterial vessel, a blood vessel. And he spurted blood, he said, for a good minute. And, and I said to him, well, if you didn't bleed it out, it's going to your heart and you might want to check out uh, what possibly could happen. I don't want to put a seed of doubt in your head. I don't want to suggest anything negative that could happen, but these are the signs. And I told them what they would be for pericarditis, which is an inflammation in, the, in, in or around the heart and the pericardium, I believe. Not sure, I'm not a doctor. So anyway, um, because he got this injection and I am an organic human being, I told him I will not be visiting because it has to process through his body. And because I work with the public, I couldn't be a, his lover. I couldn't have his sweat on me. I couldn't have his breath on me. I couldn't have him kiss me. And frankly, I was revolted because I know what's in this stuff but I don't know what's in this stuff. I sort of read what's in this stuff and it's not anything I want near me. It's disgusting. So that began the uh, process, his own choice. And then I realized he never listened to me. He never listened to any of my intuition. And my intuition is one of my biggest strengths and gifts. He didn't respect me. In fact, when I was there last, he neglected me. He would go off to the bar after I drove three hours to be there. And I just started noticing my, it's like I, I was basically going through the motions. I was in autopilot. But when I started to pay more attention to my body and do my full, not my full, but my new moon intentionalities, that's when things changed because now the moon was working with me. And now I look at his decision to do this stupid thing to his own body as a gift to me because the more I spent away from him, the more beautiful I felt, the more energized I felt, the more energy I had, the more creativity, the greater amount of um, healing power I, I had to give to my clients. And I thought to myself, why was I wasting it on this person? And then I realized, well, I loved the garden more than I loved him. And then I realized I didn't love him. He took up smoking in 2015. I'm talking almost chain smoking, like at least a pack a day. And it makes people smell. Um, he got addicted to... Um, a phone app that's poker. He would be on his phone p watching poker on television while playing poker on his phone. And then I started recognizing the narcissist in him, even though I knew he was one. I didn't actually study it enough to know what was happening. And then when I realized he always had to be distracted, 
and that he would never let me go up to the studio, which was upstairs to paint. I he always came up and paced. I could not, I didn't even have any creativity. So when you realize the things that are most important to you, if you're in, a, in a, an abusive relationship with a narcissist, like a true narcissistic personality disorder person, a true psychopath, <laughs> you won't have the energy for yourself to do the things that you came here to do. And your sole purpose is the reason why you're here, my friend. <laughs> you, you better get to it if you're not already. <laughs> so, uh, I, 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 all in all, I had to be like, well, thank you, um, shitty president of the United States for doing that stupid thing because my ex, against my advice, um, caved to the pressure because why? Because he's almost robotic. He did not listen to this golden person who has insight information. <laughs> he doesn't listen to this. I mean, come on now. <laughs> and that's when I was like, many, many, many like that's wins. I, there was so many aha moments. And uh, I finally told him, I go, I'm not coming back until 2022. In which case he said, well, I don't want to see you or hear from you again. And I said, okay. He brought my stuff to me. I told him not to come inside. I was dog sitting at the time, which was good. And I was busy with these two canines and three cats. <laughs> and I said, don't come inside. Just leave the key in the back patio. Because he, he could throw it from the part. He could throw it over the, the railing. He text messages me. I didn't leave your key because I, it didn't work. I couldn't get in the condo. Did you change the locks? <laughs> and I said in a text, I think you know the answer to that question. And this is after I told them not to try. Do not do this. I want you to leave it outside in the alcove. There's plenty of room. Leave all my things out there. Do not come in. I do not want you invading my space. And of course he tried it. And of course I changed the locks. Because I have intuition. And I knew that mofo was going to try to get in. I did not want his energy or his breath anywhere in my sacred interior. <laughs> so, ha, 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 I feel so much better. I needed to report in to tell you all, if you haven't already, uh, seed something in your life. Do those meditations I taught you. And be sure to recognize that they came from someone else, Fortune St. Germain. And if you do feel like um, subscribing to Crow Triple Seven Radio. It's only seven dollars for a month, and you can listen to first hour and second hour, including their archives. So, I am telling you this out of, out of service to them. I don't get commission, so you don't need to mention me or anything or get a special code. It's just that we do what we can to help each other on this planet, right? Because we're taking back our life, and we're radiating our light. And the future is so bright, you won't need to wear, wear shades because it's going to be you. It's going to be you that's broadcasting this beautiful light. And that's what you do. You bless the planet. You bless the inhabitants on the planet. And you continue shining your light because, yes, the future is very bright, especially with you in it.